Hello everyone, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech video. This time we're continuing with Commander Legends, and I have a pretty interesting deck here to show you. We're going to be doing Golem Tribal, but maybe not the expected combination of Commanders. We have Itch Tekic, Salvage Splicer, and we have Rebeck, Architect of Ascension. Now, since this is going to be a Golem Tribal deck, Itch Tekic is going to be pretty much ideal. Now, the other commander option, I believe, was the three mana mono black actual golem creature, but I didn't quite feel that the ability synergized well enough or that the color combination offered enough synergy. So, Itch Tekic is five mana for a 1 1. When he enters the battlefield, create a 3 3 colorless golem artifact creature token. This is very similar to the other splicers all the way back in Scars of Mirrodin. A lot of these artificers that just entered the battlefield and gave you a 3 3 golem. Whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on both Itch Tekic and a plus one plus one counter on your golems. So he's a 1 1, which shouldn't be for too long if you can easily sacrifice artifacts, which is what we're going to try to do here, and then just benefit from those counters. This is going to be more of a token deck, because 3 3 tokens, if you can make them bigger with plus 1 plus 1 counters, it's going to be pretty good in combat. So what we have here is kind of a green white artifact build. And then the other one we have here is Rebeck, Architect of Ascension, Artifacts You Control, have protection from each converted mana cost among artifacts you control. Now, if you have a bunch of these Golem tokens, it's not going to do much. Tokens have a CMC of zero. Don't worry though, we have plenty of artifacts that vary in converted mana cost. The whole point of doing this is to make it harder for our opponents to get rid of our artifacts. So, boring part of the deck, we have 37 lands, most of which, as usual, is going to be mana fixing, getting the green-white mana that we need, but we have some other useful lands. We have Ancient Den, as well as the other one for Green Tree of Tales. These are just useful. You can sacrifice them for other abilities. We have Buried Ruin to get back an artifact. We have Dread Statuary for 4 mana. It can be a 4-2 Golem artifact creature until end of turn. We have Gavany Township to put even more plus 1 plus 1 counters on our golems. We have Inventor's Fair, which is an artifact tutor on a land. And for ramp, we have plenty of it. We have Soul Ring, we have Wayfarer's Bobble, Arcane Signet, Guardian Idol, Enters Tapped, and it can tap for a colorless. And we can pay 2 mana to have it become a 2-2 Golem Artifact Creature until end of turn. We've got Mind Stone, Rampant Growth, Celestia Signet, Talisman of Unity, Cultivate, and Smothering Tithe. So we shouldn't really be struggling to get our mana. We have some good removal in here. Some of it synergizes with artifacts, like this card, Dispatch. If we control three or more artifacts, we exile the creature that we target. So it's kind of like another Swords to Plowshares, which we're also playing. We have Sundering Growth, also good for a token deck. You can destroy an artifact or enchantment for two mana, and then populate. We have Generous Gift, Cross and Grip, Cleansing Nova, Austere Command, and All is Dust, because we have a bunch of those golems, and they're all colorless. We do have one equipment in here just to make sure that even if we can't protect a card that we like with our Rebek, we can just throw a Lightning Greaves onto one of our creatures and then give it Shroud. We also have one card in here and it's for Blink, it's Eerie Interlude. Really good in combination with a lot of those splicers that enter the battlefield and get you more golems. Because you could just exile all of your splicers and then have them come back and then you get a bunch of golems. We have some card draw in here. We have Elemental Bond. Whenever a creature with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. We have Inspiring Call. We draw a card for each creature we control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And those creatures gain Indestructible until end of turn. We have Guardian Project. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you're pretty much just going to draw a card. And then we have Harmonize just to flat out draw 3 cards for 4 mana. We do have some additional power that we can provide to our artifact creatures. We can give them plus two, plus two with Tempered Steel. We also have some good token support here. We have Rootborn Defenses. It can populate. And then creatures we control gain indestructible until end of turn. We have Anointed Procession and Parallel Lives because we can get twice as many golems. On to the bulk of the deck, which is going to be golem cards. Either just straight up golems or cards that give us golems. We have Ginger Brute. Good old Haste 1-1. One, one. It's not the worst thing in the world to just have a 1-1 one, one creature because we have other ways of giving our golems more power and toughness, better abilities. You can pay 1 mana so it can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste, and you can pay 2 mana and sacrifice it so that you gain 3 life. 
We have both Metallic Mimic and Adaptive Automaton to pretty much serve the same purpose. They can become golems and provide more power and toughness or plus one plus one counters to your other golems. And here we have some more splicers. We have Blade Splicer. ETBs we get a 3-3 three, three, and golems we control have first strike. Then we have Golem Foundry. Whenever we cast an artifact spell we get to put a charge counter on it. We can remove three of those counters to get a 3-3 three, three golem. We have Titan Forge. It's a little bit harder. We pay three mana and tap it. To put a counter on it and then we tap it and remove three charge counters to get a 9-9 colorless golem artifact creature token. We have awakened amalgam for mana. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of differently named lands we control which is great because we have a ton of different lands. We have this cool golden guardian from rivals of Ixalan. It's a 4-4 with defender but we can pay two mana and have it fight another target creature we control and when it dies, we return it transformed. It becomes the land Goldforge Garrison, which can tap for two of any mana, and we can pay four mana and tap it to create a 4-4 colorless golem. We have Master Splicer. It enters the battlefield. We get a 3-3 golem. Golems we control get plus one, plus one. We have Solemn Simulacrum, which I didn't know was a golem, but uh, it's already one of the better golems in the deck. We have Vital Splicer. Enters the battlefield. We get a 3-3. We can pay one mana and regenerate a target golem. Then we have Geode Golem as Trample, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we may cast our commander from the command zone without paying its mana cost. We have Sensor Splicer. When it enters the battlefield, we get another 3-3. And Golems we control have Vigilance. We have Beast of Burden. Power and Toughness are each equal to the number of creatures in play. We have Brass Herald. ETBs, we choose a creature type. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all creature cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. It's a golem. We have Maul Splicer. When it enters the battlefield, you put two, three, three colorless golem artifact creature tokens onto the battlefield. And golems you control have trample. So this is arguably one of the better ones. If you can blink it, you're going to get another two. You get more power and toughness. Get more plus one, plus one counters on them. Very good. We have Meteor Golem, another really good golem. Enters the battlefield, we get to destroy a non-land permanent. We have Colossus of Akros, Defender Indestructible, a 10-10 for 8, but we can pay its monstrosity cost of 10. We put 10 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and as long as it's monstrous, it has Trample and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. We have Maelstrom Colossus, a 7-7 seven, seven for 8 Cascade. Then we have Platinum Imperion, our life total can't change. We can also give it a bunch of those good keywords. We have Phyrexian Triniform, this is just a deadly card. You give it Trample, you give it any of those other good keywords, and you're likely going to deal a ton of damage. When it dies, we get three three threes. Just a fantastic card. We have Ancient Stone Idol. It's a 12-12 Golem with Flash and Trample, and it costs one less to cast for each attacking creature, so it's a cool trick to play if we're being attacked, so we can block their best creature with a 12-12. And when it does die, we get a 612 colorless construct artifact creature token with trample, which isn't as good because it's a construct, but the original creature is a golem. We have Darksteel Colossus, Indestructible Trample, 11, 11 for 11. A lot better when you have artifact synergies and golem tribal. We have Mycosynth Golem, affinity for artifacts, so it costs one less for each artifact you control. And artifact creature spells you play have affinity for artifacts, so if you have nothing but artifact tokens, it's pretty much just going to make it so that all of your artifact spells are going to be free. And then we have Blight Steel Colossus, which I don't normally play, unless I'm just doing pure infect or this Golem Tribal. But you get Trample, Infect, Indestructible, so it's Dark Steel Colossus, but even better. And the last part of the deck is the artifacts. We have some artifact synergies that I think are just necessary to have. We have Scrap Trawler to get back some artifacts from our graveyard. We have Trading Post to also do that, but it's kind of a Swiss Army knife. It can do other things. We have Conjurer's Closet to do even more blink. Get more ETBs out of our Splicers. We have Forsaken Monument. Colorless creatures we control get plus two, plus two. Whenever we tap a permanent for colorless, we add an additional colorless. And whenever we cast a colorless spell, we gain two life. So all around a fantastic card, quite possibly one of the best cards all year. We have Koldotha Forge Master, really easy to put into play, something like a Blight Steel. If you do this at your opponent's end step, that means that they don't really have as much time to respond, because it's easy to remove a Blight Steel if you play it at sorcery speed. But if you're doing this on your opponent's turn right before you take yours, 
it's going to be even more powerful. And then we have Mycosynth Lattice. This is such an important card because of our Rebek. If we can make all of our permanents artifacts, hopefully we don't have to go up against a Vandal Blast. But this is just going to make it so much easier for our Rebek to do her job. And then we have opened the vaults to get back all of our artifacts from our graveyard to the battlefield. Just a very good card to have. And we have Darksteel Forge. So all of our artifacts are indestructible. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this deck tack. This is Itch Techic and Rebek. Believe it or not, yeah, Green White has better support for Golems than Green Black. And also, if you're taking advantage of tokens and plus one plus one counters, White's usually going to be a better color for that. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this Commander deck. Let me know what you think about these two partners. Had a lot of fun making this deck. You all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next time.